Hi guys, it's Kelly Lenovole here and I am here with my very first video for scrapbook.com so I'm super excited about that. I'm going to be using the um, some stuff from Honeybee, so their Stacking Hearts dies and then this geometric background stencil and then the sentiment set is from scrapbook.com. It's called Best Friends Forever. It's got like cute little snarky sentiments in it which is totally right up my alley and so like one of them says um, you don't have to be crazy to be my friend but it helps. Uh, another one is we've been friends for so long I forgot who was the bad influence. So they're just funny and cute. So I'm going to be doing a, um, a technique basically that I haven't done in, in a super long time. And I'm, I'm not sure what it's called. Uh, impression stenciling? Stenciling impressions? Imp impression stenciling. I, I'll name it something by the time I get the video posted. But pretty much my game plan is um, that I'm going to do some watercolor in the background. Then I am going to put my stencil on top. I'm going to weigh it down and then I'm going to let it dry. So it leaves the impression of the stencil in the watercolor and it looks super cool. So to start, I obviously have smushed down all of my Distress Oxides on my Ranger Craft Mat. Then I'm using a number eight round brush and I just put a bunch of clean water on the background. You are going to have to decide how much water you want to be on there. You, I didn't make it like a crazy sloppy mess. I just put down enough water that it was wet, but it's not pooling. It's not like it, morphing the paper or anything like that, but it does need to be wet. Then I'm just going through and in a rainbow order because I love me a rainbow. Um, I'm just adding these Distress Oxides kind of at an angle. I knew I wanted my bottom right hand side to have my sentiment and my heart so that to be kind of like my little collage or focal point. And um, so that's the general form of what I'm doing here. Um, and as this go, like as I go through and I keep adding the color, um, I am going to go back in because I don't like I struggle with having like really manufactured edges and that's what this feels like to me so I'm going to go back in and I'm adding more color but I'm also adding more moisture to the paper so I like to pick up some of the color and then kind of tap my paintbrush so it gives a little bit of spatter on the edges so it creates a more organic look and I'm going to do that for every one of the colors. And yes, it means that you can't control the spatter and sometimes you're going to get some yellow in your green or some blue in your purple. I'm fine with that. That's, that doesn't bother me. Uh, anywhere that I feel like um, maybe it feels a little bit too fake, like the edges look weird, I'm going to kind of uh, use my paintbrush to extend them a little bit. Um, but again... I will be going back over this because there does need to be moisture on the paper for this to work. If it's already dry by the time you put the stencil on, it won't work. On the flip side, if you are making soup on your paper, it's going, it probably will work, um, but it's going to take forever to dry. So you don't want to necessarily do that either. There should be a good happy medium where there is enough water on your paper that it looks wet, but not so much that it's pooling would be, I guess, the best way I can describe it. And I have done this technique before. I haven't done it in a really long time, um, probably because I just don't think about it because I'm so busy coloring all of the images. Um, but there are so many other ways to get color on your project. Sometimes I just forget about them. And this is a really easy way to to do it, to put a lot of um, color in your, your background. And then you know how I feel about rainbows with black and white, which is ultimately what I ended up doing. But if you don't love black and white, I'm going to show you a way to do that as well. So here I've put the stencil on. I'm taking a very large acrylic block and I'm going to push that down. And you can see all the water smush out behind it. Then I'm going to set that aside with a very large book on top of it. And um, that way there's good pressure and I'm just going to let it dry while I do the rest of my things. So here I thought maybe I would want some rainbow colored hearts to match my rainbow background. So I'm just using my little sponge daubers and some scrapbook.com ink and I'm just pretty much doing an area big enough to cover the heart dye that I want to use. 
And this would be, I would highly recommend doing this um, if you don't, because I don't keep a lot of colored cardstock. It's just not something that I use very often. So when I want something to be colored, it's much easier for me to use my ink to create my own. But you could absolutely do this with colored cardstock um, if you don't want to take the time to do all of the inking. But it worked really well and the color was super solid. So you wouldn't even know um, that it wasn't cardstock if you didn't see me do this process. Again, I wanted to share it with you. This is not what I ended up doing for the card, but still something good to learn. So here it's dry. I did have, like when I lifted it up, it seemed like there might have been one or two areas that were still cool, which if your paper is cold, it means it's still wet, even if you can't actually see the wetness. So I'm just going over it, um, very briefly with my heat gun. I'm not getting too close. Obviously my stencil is on it. I'm not trying to melt anything. But here you can see like this little geometric pattern that's kind of impressed itself into the background and I love it. I love the way it came out. In order to make sure everything is um, dry completely, I'm just going back in with the heat tool once the uh, stencil was removed and just you know, drying that from the back and the front because there is, you know, quite a bit of um, water on there. And I want to just want to make sure before I start building upon it that everything is dry. One of the other things that I did that I wanted to make sure um, everything was dry for was I used um, some, what is that, shimmer, uh, white iridescent shimmer spray from Hero Arts. And I used the barrel of that to flick some shimmer onto the background. So for the sentiment, I knew, like I said, I know me, and you probably know your own style as well. I love um, the black and white with the uh, rainbow colors. So here I'm gonna, just going to do an embossed sentiment. I'm using my embossing bag to treat the black cardstock so that, um, you know, nothing sticks where I don't want it to stick. I am inking up with Versamark, which is just a clear sticky ink that my embossing powder will um, stick to so that I can melt it down. I'm going to stamp that down using my Misty, my sentiment of the, the snarky best friends one says, best friends don't judge each other. They judge other people together, which I thought was hysterical. I thought it was just so funny. <laughs> um, so I did do it twice just because this is the first time I used the stamp and I wanted to make sure that I got a really good impression. And then I am using um, white embossing powder, just going to sprinkle that on. And then I'll go back in, um, I always flick off the back, and then I'll go back in with a smaller uh, paintbrush just to kind of clean up any edges there. You can also use a um, craft pick. The Tim Holtz craft pick works really well for that. Laura Basson actually taught me that little trick. If you need to get in between the letters to get rid of like one little or two little specks, that works really well. I'm going to heat this up with my heat tool till it's nice and glossy and shiny. All of it is melted. And then I'm going to trim it down to be a little label because I don't know. It's, I'm just addicted to making my sentiments that way. Speaking of trimming down, I'm also going to trim down this panel because it is bigger than a card front. I gave myself a little bit of a buffer in case there were some areas maybe I didn't like or, um, it, you know, your colors mix weird sometimes. But this actually came out lovely. I was super happy with it. And so I just trimmed that down to be the size of an A2 size card, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. Here you can see all of my little rainbow hearts. I laid them out there. Um, I didn't really love them. And then I opted to just go with the black. That was my um, personal preference. I don't think that the colors are necessarily bad. I think that they're super cute. Uh, and like I said, the, the coloring came out really solid. So I may use that for um, another card. Here's where I'm going in and adding that extra shimmer and just using the barrel of the sprayer um, or the tubing of the sprayer to sprinkle that on. And then I'm going to heat that up real quick. You can put that on while your uh, watercolor is wet, but then everything's going to have shimmer. It will spread with the water. Uh, if you do it this way, it's more just spatters of um, shimmer, which is kind of how I prefer it. So here I'm going to pop up my sentiment in the bottom right hand corner and then I'm going to add the uh, black hearts, same thing with some foam tape so that it's all um, popped up and level and that's just going to create my focal point for the card. Yes, I create, aren't you so proud of me? I created a card with tons of color but has no coloring. 
Like sometimes, and I love coloring, you guys know I do, that, that makes me happy. Um, but sometimes it's nice to create something where there isn't um, that time consuming process and coloring is very time consuming. Um, sometimes it's nice to just create like a quick and simple card, which I'm sure you could probably figure out from the fact that this video is, you know, only whatever, 10, 11 minutes long. Um, because it did not take me as long as it normally does to create a card. So when you need something that you just want to, you know, pop in the mail, well, not me pop in the mail because you know I don't mail anything, but uh, if you have a friend that you would actually like to send a card to, um, something like this is a great way to do that. I love adding uh, shimmer to black cardstock because it looks amazing. If you want to really amp it up with the shimmer, put glossy accents on top because then you trap the shimmer in between and you'll be able to see that in the, like the still photos. But that's it. That's the whole card. Super quick and simple. I love it. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining me and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.